I want this message to be very special. And it's only going to be special if you uh, open your mouth. And if you let your words flow. And if you open up the hearts of your people so that they might receive. So, Father, let it be. About 18 years ago, um, I was attending a charismatic Baptist church. And I was uh, pretty much at the, uh, the end of my wits with uh, my Christianity. I had been a Christian for four or five years. Um, and I went to him to uh, just kind of pour out my guts and um, just let him know that I wasn't a happy camper. And at that time, there was a, uh, a revival kind of a, a citywide prayer revival kind of a thing going on. Uh, I don't know if any of you participated in it. Francis Frangipane, Mike Bickle, and Rick Joyner, and some of those people were gathering corporate prayer uh, centers in, in major cities and, and breaking people out of their denominationalism and, and, bring, and uniting them in, in prayer. And he felt that his uh, congregation should participate that, in that, and, uh, and we prayed about it. And as we were praying, um, I had a vision. And uh, I saw myself on a surfboard, um, looking over my shoulder, surfing. And I was looking over the shoulder, looking for my wave. And this wave was coming by, and it was this, this um, movement that was, you know, occurred 10, 15 years ago, of this citywide prayer kind of thing. And I saw the wave, and the Holy Spirit said, don't catch it, let that one go by. And um, so it passed, and uh, I kept looking over the shoulder, waiting for my wave. And I know that this wave is a wave that's going to take me all the way to shore. It's a mighty wave. It's a glorious wave. It's a destructive wave. It will devour and destroy like any great tsunami. But behind that wave is great cleansing of soul and spirit. The destructions, the traditions, and the systems that have held us in bondage, many of those things are going to be destroyed. And there will be a new day. And it will be fresh. And it will be clean. And it will be simple. And it will be glorious. So we were praying. And I saw that vision. And then I poured out my guts to him and told him, you know, I, I hate this Christianity stuff that I'm involved in. I don't want to be a Christian anymore. Um, I was very depressed. And he gave me this tape by a Dallas Theological Seminary professor. He said, listen to this tape. It'll, it'll, it'll do you some good. So I went down Interstate 70 listening to this Dallas Theological PhD. And about 10, 15 minutes into it, I turned it off and I said, that's it. I quit. This is just crap. This is just a bunch of four-letter words. This is doing nothing for me. And I was in a little Ford Festiva at that time, and I don't know if, if any of you know what a Ford Festiva looks like, but it's a little tiny thing. I mean, if you, if you move a little bit, you're going to see this thing bouncing up and down like, you know, one of those little Mexican doggy things or something like that. And I just, I turned that thing off, took the cassette tape out of the cassette player, opened up the window and threw it out. And I started <coughs> coming to my papa. I said, that's it. I quit. I'm not going to serve you anymore. This is a bunch of crap. I don't like what I'm doing. I'm a hypocrite in the midst of a bunch of other hypocrites. And I was better off as an atheist. So I want you to send a lightning bolt right now and hit me right on the head and take me out of here because I'm not playing this Christian game anymore. It stinks. 
I was better off as an atheist than I am now. Now, I knew where I was going if I hit that lightning bolt. I knew, I believed in this, in, in uh, once saved, always saved at that time. And I knew that I was going to heaven. It wasn't like, you know, <laughs> like I was, you know, asking for some kind of terrible destruction upon me. Uh, I knew the outcome of that lightning bolt was going to be, you know, send me to paradise. But whatever was going on here on earth, I didn't want to participate in anymore. It stank. So, uh, you know, I was, I was sincere. I, was, I, I meant it, you know, come on, beam me up. Take me out. And I can't, couldn't think of a quicker, faster, more glorious way to go out than in a flash of lightning, disintegrate. Pew, great way to go. And I came uh, to my town, and just before there, there was, a, there was an old man that lived on, in, a, in Portland, Oregon, a little old prophetic kind of guy who let me just be myself. And I, and I poured out my guts to him, and he just laughed as I was pouring out my silly little stuff. And at the end of the conversation, he said, Gary, uh, I have a set of booklets here that just came in the mail. He says, I haven't read them yet, but I think they're for you. And he gave me these booklets, and I took them home and I read them, and they were J. Preston Eby's Savior of the World series, <laughs> which is one of the best groups of booklets as a treatise of universal salvation that you can find on the planet of the earth. And the Lord had those setting for me on that day. There is a God. <laughs> there is a God. 